interest of getting some user interaction, I'm going to be making a lot of claims here, and I'd just just like, if, if you disagree or currently don't think the same, it'd be fun just to raise your hand. I won't be able to address it all, but, but it'd be just fun if you disagree. And the first claim I'm going to make is when Joseph Smith said, all spirit is matter, my assertion is that he was talking about this real matter here. Is anyone's beliefs different than, from that? So, so let's, let's move on. And, 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 but, and so we've got a picture of flowers there that have, appear to have a redness quality and they're made of matter. But my next assertion is that redness quality is not a property of that matter. The redness quality is a property of my knowledge of that stuff in my brain. And you can think about that because perception is a cause and effect chain of events that, and, and we can illustrate. So, so here, we, we, if we, in, we can put an inverter anywhere in that chain of perception that inverts redness and greenness. And you can see on the right thing there, we of course haven't changed the properties of the matter of the flowers out there, but the intuition is now that that greenness uh, image in between the real flowers, is it, our intuition is that that's ha the image on the screen has the greenness quality. But let's falsify that and we can do that with this image here. So you can see in person A there, the initial cause of the perception, he's looking at the strawberry and the final result is his knowledge in the brain. And the redness quality is the quality of his knowledge of the brain. And you can put an inverter anywhere in that perception process and you can see if you have an app on the phone that inverts redness and greenness. And so he's looking at that strawberry on the phone and it appears to be that strawberry that has the greenness quality. But that inversion is immediately before the retina. And you could also do the same inversion by putting the inversion immediately after the retina, as displayed in C. So you can see someone's gone in, Neuralink or someone like that, and rewired red with green, green with red in your retina, or just done it some way like that. So now he's looking at the strawberry, and he's experiencing the strawberry exactly like B is. So he's, he's, he's going to. Um, and, 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 and that's what science can't account for. If red light's landing on his retinas, but he's experiencing this greenness quality, science can't tell you what that is. When you're dreaming of redness and greenness, science can't tell you what that is. They can observe and dis objectively describe everything in the brain, but when you objectively describe the stuff in the brain, that doesn't tell you the qualities of what they're like, the objective description. And, and if we cut up on the brain, we can't see those qualities in the brain, and why is that? Well, the reason that is that is because objective observation is just abstract. It's like if, you, if all science didn't have any pictures in it and all you had was text and all of our science literature, no way could you map any of that to the, what you can experience when you look at that and experience redness. And so the problem is that science can't tell us which of all our descriptions in the brain is a description of that redness. And so there's no connection. There's no objective connection to what we can subjectively experience. And what that means is subjective experience is a detector of those, what I would like to call spiritual qualities. Redness and greenness are spiritual qualities. And, and, and our subjective conscious is a detector of those spiritual qualities of something in our brain. And so what that means is there's two different ways to gain knowledge of, of the real world. There's objective observation and perception on the left, and there's subjective direct discernment. And, um, and let me go back here for a sec. So Joseph Smith said, spirit can only be discerned by pure eyes. And I think he had a brilliant insight there to, to say, yeah, objective perception, if you're cut open your brain and look at all that stuff, all you're going to get is this abstract text data coming at you, and you, there's no mapping between that and the subjective experiences we can get by experiencing that same stuff. And so, let's go on to here, and so, yeah, and so object perception is abstract, and it's done from afar, whereas subject is non-abstract, and it's direct discernment of the stuff that's going on in your brain. And perception is substrate independent. It doesn't matter what's representing red or green or anything else, as long as you have a dictionary from the word red to someone pointing to that redness experience saying, that is red. So you need, and so because of that, object perception can be mistaken. But there is no interpretation of that subject experience of that redness. You just experience it directly and absolutely, and it cannot be mistaken. You know the quality of your redness, and no one, and that cannot be mistaken. And so what that means is there is, uh, let's see if we can get these videos to come up here. I spent too much time on these videos. 
I should have been practicing my talk for. But, but basically what it means is there's a world in your head, as you can see there, there's a subjective spirit world in your head composed of those redness and greenness spiritual qualities. And, you, and the spirit world in your head is a little bit different than the world out there that you can see. And, um, and, and so the, the world in your head is, is about one mile diameter. And you can think of the sky is about one mile away and, and spray painted blue, but think of that inside your skull as the inside of your skull pa spray painted bull blue and the horizon and the stars and everything are flat cutouts just painted on your ceiling of the wor spirit world in your head. And, and all of that knowledge is your knowledge of the world that's out there. And there's differences between those two worlds. Of course, in the real Euclidean world, the, the streets are parallel lines that go on forever. But in your head, they're, they're approaching the vanishing point, so they're curved and they touch together. And, and so there's those differences. And also, given that, we go to what is an out-of-body experience? Well, basically, you have, again, your knowledge of the house has a representation of the real house. You have knowledge of the street that is a representation of the real street. But you also have knowledge of a spirit it's represented just behind your head as if it's looking out of your knowledge of your eyes. And so your knowledge of your spirit can leave your knowledge of your head and fly around your body. That's what an out-of-body experience is. And you can look up in Google how to induce out-of-body experiences. And you can, there's setups they do with cameras and stuff like that and feelings in different ways where you can induce out-of-body experiences. But the point being is the knowledge of that street has a reference in reality out there. The knowledge of the house has a referent that's in reality out there. But your knowledge of your spirit doesn't have a referent in reality out there. But that doesn't change the fact that the knowledge of your spirit is something real in your brain. And certainly once Neuralink gets in there, they're going to be able to observe the knowledge of your spirit. And, and they'll be able to induce out-of-body experiences and fly around and, and go back in and lodge at the normal place right behind the knowledge of your eyes. And so given that, we, we move into, um, let's see. The neural ponytails. So ba basically, come on, video, load up, load up, load up. So how much time we got? Two minutes left. So, but basically, the, your visual knowledge is in one hemisphere. Half of your visual knowledge is in one hemisphere of your brain, and the other half of the visual knowledge is in the other hemisphere of your brain. And yeah, you can see. And and then the neural, the bundle of neurons called the corpus callosum combine those two worlds together into one unified experience. And that combining together is the magic that happens by the corpus callosum, and we call that computational binding. And that's why I can experience all of my visual experience, but I can't experience your visual experience because there's no computational binding. Computational binding, of course, is very different than communication and stuff like that. So. Um, and, and so the idea is, if you could take a similar neural ponytail that worked like the corpus callosum, you could put those together. And if we come over to here and let's watch that video again, this one's going to have to upload again. But um, it would enable your um, hemisphere to bind with your partner's hemisphere and merge into one unified world. So once that's merged together, you would be able to see through your partner's eyes and see what's behind them. And you'd be able to see your own face through their knowledge. And the both worlds would be unified together. And, and then you would be able to have an out-of-body experience. And your two knowledge of your spirits would be able to be engineered so they could dance around in that spirit world. and. And, and, and then we can, t and, and, and most people don't realize that when they see the movie Avatar and they hook up those neural ponytails. Imagine when you hug a loved one, you experience half of the experiences. But if you had a neural ponytail like that, you could experience 100% of what your partner wanted to allow you to experience. And you could go, oh, and, and, and that's what it would be because your spirit worlds would be able to merge together and become the same thing. And, um, and so basically then we can take that to the next step now for what would uploading be like. So you would have Neuralink would go in and put in an aug augment into your brain and interface with your brain and all of that and have an artificial neural ponytail. And then you would have an avatar just like they had in the movie Avatar. And, and they would com combine you up and your 
spirit worlds would merge together and, and you won't be, you could engineer it if you, and, and that's why ghosts can travel through walls and stuff like that because these spirit worlds are just virtual reality simulations of the real world out there. And, um, and they'll be able to engineer it to any way we want it. They could do it like the movies, all the movies from Tron to Avatar, they have your spirits going down a tube into the other body, but, but, that's, but you could just engineer it to have an out of body experience. So you would have, imagine this spirit world where everything behind you is a thousand times the resolution. So for every pixel you have of knowledge of the stuff we're seeing right there, you have a thousand pixels. And not only that, but we have about three primary colors. Imagine your augmented, Ver oh, I'm out of time, sorry about that. But, but anyway, it goes on a lot more, but let's, let's go on through this. But, but anyway, the, the, the point is, is um, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, go to canonizer.com and sign this petition to, because we need to communicate to the science which of all the descriptions of stuff in the brain is a description of reality. And so, um, yeah, but that's my, and, and get your friends, let's take action and not just talk about it, let's make something happen. But anyway, sorry for going over time. and Thank, thank you, you Brent.